Hello everyone and welcome to the Eurasia Animal Pack for Planet Zoo. So this pack comes with eight new animals from the Eurasian supercontinent. So a mixture of Europe and Asia. And our first animal is of the Indian subcontinent, the Sloth Bear. One of the most striking looking animals that it has ever come into a pack. As it has some of the most beautiful fur textures in the whole game. It really emphasizes the shaggy look of a sloth bear. And yeah, I think this guy might be my favorite animal of the pack. It may not be the most unique animal of the pack, but it certainly is a very good looking animal. Frontier certainly knocked it out of the park when it came to the sloth bear, and I'm so glad we now have India's most famous bear. I think it's India's only bear too. Now these animals are actually known to be quite aggressive in, the, in real life, so... Yeah, hopefully that isn't <laughs> translated into the game, but if a sloth bear were to fight another sloth bear, it would probably get hectic. But I think it would just look the same as all the other bears fighting. Uh, next on our list is the wild boar. So this animal is... Okay, I don't know why the water is so loud, but um, let's look at Martin, our big wild hog. Yeah, wild boar looks stellar. The fur textures here are also very good. Looking like a proper wild boar. What else can I say? Yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to use the wild boar at some point, probably in like an Australian section of a zoo. And, uh, yeah, use it as a feral representative, you could say. But this owl has been cried out for for a while. And, yeah, it's great that we finally have it. An animal that... Despite being high on the 2023 Essential Habitat Animals Meta wish list, it is still a weird choice by many. So this is the Saiga, an endangered antelope, although it has now been reclassified as near threatened. Um, yeah, it's certainly one of the weirdest animals that has ever come into Planet Zoo with its bizarre nose. Uh, if I can get a good shot, there we go. Looking absolutely beautiful there. What was that? Must be the male, potentially. Or just another Saiga. So that's... Who's this up here? Okay, so we've got another female up here with... Another one. I don't know where our male is. He's somewhere here. <laughs> wow, that's a cool sound, actually. But, um... Yeah, so these antelope have been often regarded as critically endangered and one well, of the most threatened species on the planet. But now their numbers are starting to increase, which is a very good sign for the species. So hopefully these Saiga antelope will make a full recovery and will no longer be threatened in any capacity. Now most don't associate this as a zoo animal, as they only exist in two zoos, one in Kazakhstan and the other on a wildlife reserve in Ukraine. Ah uh, yes, there we go, some of the unique uh, nose animations as the large noses of the Saiga antelope help filter the dust and yeah help them breathe when in large herds here we go here's the male those beautiful shiny horns yeah lovely um our next owl is the wolverine what, what was the number one on the meta wish list after the tasmanian devil uh yeah it's great to see it in the game here. Oh, look at it climb. It's a neat climbing animation, actually. But the Wolverine does allow for other large mustelids like the honey badger to be added, as they do share very similar animations. So hopefully one day the, the honey badger will be able to be added alongside the Wolverine. Now these animals are pretty common in captivity in the US and have been seen several times and yeah it's very nice to get the wolverine as another mustelid that's not an otter or a badger instead just a, a large species now these animals are found across eurasia and north america around the arctic circle and various different habitats they're one of the most adaptable animals around so it's very cool to have it in the game as it will be able to utilize all the cold climate biomes, so from Temperate, Taiga, and Tundra. Next down is the Tarkin. Uh, talk Tarkin about Tarkins. 
as, as people like to say. This is probably one of my favorites of the pack, as it is one I'll probably utilize quite often. It is, it was, like a Wolverine, also part of my Highlands Animal Pack. But now, these two are not in the pack, so I've revised it and given another look at it. So, in the place of the Tark, we are now the Muskox. Hopefully, we'll come into the game at some point. But yeah, it's just a very beautiful animal. It isn't specified as to which subspecies of Tarkin it is, but it's very clearly the Sichuan Tarkin. If you know your Tarkins well, it's the Sichuan Tarkin. Hopefully it can get renamed, potentially. Uh, jumping over here, we also have the Herman's Tortoise. Another pretty active exhibit animal. Don't know what's going on with the graphics today. Oh, there we go. It's fixed itself up. But yeah. Very pretty little tortoise. We'll move around occasionally, but um, not to the extent that it's uh, moving around the whole exhibit. Okay, yeah, the graphics are playing up with... I think I need to start a new map, as all these DLCs being squeezed into one is starting to get a bit hectic. Our next animal is the... Okay, I should probably talk about the Hermes tortoise a little bit. So they're from the Mediterranean, uh, one of the only tortoise species in Eurasia. And is our first tortoise since the base game. So it's very cool to get a sort of normal sized tortoise, not a giant tortoise. And they also have a very nice pattern, so it's, I guess that's a bonus. Hey there, little fella. How you doing? Yeah, it's good. It looks like he's panting a little bit. Yeah, he is. So we're just trying to keep cool. Our headliner of the pack is the Wizen, or European Bison. An animal with a great conservation success story where they were extinct in the wild and through careful breeding and captivity they were able to be reintroduced into many parts of Europe and have recently been reintroduced to the UK. So that's a very cool reintroduction story. Very similar to the Stravolsky's horse and Scimitar Horned Oryx. Scimitar Horned Oryx which actually has been changed to endangered now. So. Things are looking up in the undulate world for many of these animals. But it's a very beautiful looking animal nonetheless, the, the uh, Wizent. Has a lot better fur textures than the American Bison, I would say. But given one of the animals that we'll cover in a second, uh, who knows, the American Bison may get another look. And our last animal is the Mute Swan. I think most people's favourite of the pack, as it is another bird, of course. But a waterfowl, so proper swimming animations for a waterfowl like a swan, goose, or duck. Oh, wow. Okay. I thought you called the mute swan. I thought you were going to stay silent. <laughs> but, yeah, these guys will make a great decorative species. Oh, I say decorative, more ambient animal in your parks. So just putting them as a wild animal walking around your zoo and living in the ponds that you place around the place. So... I mean, that's the only use I'll probably get out of the Mute Swan, but if you see any other uses for it, do let me know in the comments, and I could potentially try them out. But that is the Eurasian Animal Pack. Granted, I will not use a lot of these animals, as I'm not too familiar with them, and yeah, they're not the most interesting, necessarily. I don't want to sound like I'm hating on the pack, but I do like it, as it does flesh out a region that was somewhat lacking. The Eurasian region was severely lacking, even with the Europe pack. But um, I'm glad that many of the European players have a lot more variety with some of the species now. That's a very good thing. One of the major update features is the new souvenir shops. Huh. There's music in here. Okay, I didn't think the music was going to be that loud. But, um... Yeah, so these have a variety of different items in here. So you got the counter, uh, you got shelves with various different items on them. Oh, jeez. Okay, that is very loud. <laughs> but, um, actually not a bad beat. But yeah, we've got a lot of new souvenir items that you can place around. Don't know why they've got DLC pictures on here when some people may not have those DLCs. Who knows? But, um, yeah, this is certainly a feature that was asked for for a while. Proper gift shops. And now you can finally put one in your zoo. Yeah, I mean, 
they made a big deal of it, but I, I'm not too <laughs> psyched out by it. But I'll certainly utilize this feature in future zoo builds. But yeah, look at all these plushies. Oh, hello. <laughs> okay. But um, in the update, we also got two new tiger variations. So pseudo melanistic for uh, a couple of tigers. For I think the Siberian and Bengal tiger, yes, as well as Erythristic or Golden tigers. So I haven't got those in the park as well. I think those would be quite hard to find. Like if I go into tigers right now, so let's have a look for Bengal tiger. Okay, what were the chances of that? <laughs> okay, got a pseudo melanistic then. Um, okay. Well, I guess we can have a look at one, so, um, build a very quick little exhibit in this video, I guess, just to have a look at this tiger, so, this isn't going to be the prettiest exhibit in the world, like, it's just going to be a pen, don't judge me for it, so, come on, there we go, yeah, I'm going to have to start a new map, because it is lagging out here. I've got no escapes on, so I should just be able to throw this guy right in. Let's have a look at him. Let's speed it up. Or, instead, while we're waiting for the pseudo-melanistic Bengal tiger, let's go have a look at my highlight of the update. And that is the redone Malayan Tapir. So, it's been a long time coming, but we finally got a remodel of the Malayan Tapir. And... Most, most things about it have changed in comparison to the beds. And, yeah, it's got longer snouts. Got a bit of a different back. Like, if you go into the Zoopedia, it's completely changed too. So, Malayan. Yeah, look. Oh, wait, they're getting up now. So, I might just be able to have a look at them when they stand up. Okay, Susilo. Let's have a look at you. Yeah, so you can see it's got a much more rounded head. And white above the hips. And a more slanted back. So, it's looking a lot more like a proper Malayan tapir rather than a black and white beards. So, it's great to see. I don't know what this could possibly mean for future updates, but some people are saying potentially a big remaster update could come through. To remaster a lot of the base game animals to get them up to speed with the current quality and realism that many of the animals have gone for in in, recent, in the most recent of packs. But it's great to see that the Malayan Tapir is finally given the proper design it deserves. And it's great to see just a beautiful Tapir. Yeah. Well, that Bengal Tiger should be through now. And we'll have a brief look at the Tiger before we end the video. Yes, he's down here. So, have a look at Arav. Whoa, look at that. Yeah, that's a very cool looking tiger. Very cool pattern. Yeah, so pseudomelanistic is basically just more dark colours on the body. So, in this case, the, the stripes are a lot darker and much bigger as well. Taking up a lot more of space on the coat. Yeah. Very cool design there. Um... I wonder, did, did we get the lucky dip? Okay, I was going to say, could you imagine if we got a golden tabby tiger as well? Yeah, that, that, that would have been cool, but yeah. Anyway, so that is all for now. Um, I will mention that the wolverine, oh, there we go, does use the tug rope, but um, the animations aren't quite lined up when I watched it use it, but uh, that could just be a glitch. Speaking of glitches, some other things that were fixed were was the slow motion jumping for some of the animals that uh, climbed. So Clouded Leopard was a big one. And yeah, that has been fixed. But um, yeah, let me know what you think of the pack and what's your favorite animal? What's your favorite part of the update? And what do you think the redesign of the Malayan tape you could mean for future updates? Hopefully we could see a lot of the animals get remade. So, a few notable animals that I would like to see get um, a bit of a redo 
one is my particular is my boy the red panda needs to be yeah uh, looks has to look a lot different <laughs> red kangaroo as well i just spent some time with a lot of red kangaroos and looking at the face it could use a bit more detail and the fur too looking has to look a bit more coarse somewhat like the quokka or the redneck wallabies fur similar to that as they're not exactly that smooth uh let me think Plain zebra as well could be given more hair than um, solid block for a mane. I mean, that's what I, I'm just thinking. A carpy, I know some people think it, it should do it should get a remodel, and I I can agree with that. Nile monster as well get a redesign. Uh, I would say they could potentially redesign a bit of the meerkat as well to bring it more in line with the real meerkat. Give it a bit more of a realistic face and some of the other fur textures who knows they could do that mandrel as well could use a bit of a redo komodo dragon potentially yeah it could use what it could use one koala uh saltwater crocodile i would say could use one ringtail lima yeah definitely could have a bit of a redo it, there's a lot there's a lot snow leopard too <laughs> but I think the number one on people's list is the lion. The lion should be given justice. And even animals like the chimpanzee being given a few different um, skin variations. But, uh, oh yeah, Timberwolf too. But yeah, that's all I have for this video. Let me know what your favourite animal of the pack is. And yeah, I'll see you soon because I think the Prehistoric Kingdom update is going to be released today. So, potentially we'll be able to have a look at that. Yeah. And I'm going to have to change a map. <laughs> yeah, this map is going crowded, so... Yeah, I think this is the last time we'll be on this map, unfortunately. And we'll have to start a new one. But, um, yeah. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.